What's up, YouTube? Heathens here. I'm bringing you my review of my 2023 Peterbilt 579 Ultra Loft. Stay tuned. Yo, what's up? I know it's been a minute. Um, bringing this video, my review. Um, so first off, I got this truck brand new. It had only 24 miles on it, so it wasn't the tow truck, which is cool. Um, and not so cool, I guess, to some people. I guess, you know, they feel like if they've driven it, then, you know, a little bit of the kinks is already out of it. But to each their own. Um, currently, I have little over 65,000 miles on it since I've picked it up in September early September I've done one student and partial I mean most of the miles is running a student so I mean it is what it is um, but here's my full review and 100% honest with me so first thing is first the upgrades um, I did get multiple upgrades, which is great. So, um, we'll start with that. First upgrade, we're gonna dive deep in, and uh, you can look at the video that I'm about to post right now. driving and I'm going to talk about that in another video but it really kind of set the tone for my review of the front axle um, I did get the air ride front axle which was about I think $1,300 that I paid for um, fortunately because of what happened both both my airbags on the passenger side blew up including the uh, shock I believe I need to replace the leveling valve need to be replaced uh, And something to do with the leaf spring that it's connected to need to be replaced it snapped literally in half um, so I Was in uh, New Mexico had to take it over to Albuquerque rush um, Which you know kind of sucked because they were only open for certain hours and closed on certain days Was well, so I, I'm used to TLG in Springfield where it's 24 hour shop which is always a plus for there but for that passenger side it ended up running me about twenty two hundred dollars getting that both bags fixed and everything um, it did cost me about shoot I think it was like four days four I believe it was four days in a hotel as well so that was like an extra thousand dollars because I you know with food and everything um, and also taking care of my student. Well, so once the parts showed up to the shop, it didn't take them long to fix it. Um, fast forward about 40,000 miles, the driver's side, while I was driving, I hit a little tiny little bump out in uh, Kentucky, and it one of the bags just said that uh, it didn't want to be there no more. So there's that. Uh, spent two days in Louisville, Kentucky at the TLG shop there so much faster and I'm still replacing both airbags the part of the leaf spring also snapped in half as well which makes me feel like as if it's a design flaw um, could be not it could just been you know it finally taking a shit when you know passenger side happened I mean when that when that happened it, it hit pretty hard so could have been a hairline crack that finally you know took time for it to disappear so both bags got replaced um, there is no leveling valve on that side and the piece of leaf spring had to be replaced as well the shock was okay so that didn't need to be replaced and it ran me about twelve hundred dollars that time and two nights in the hotel would have been one night but I got two nights um, 
So not as expensive, not as much downtime. So that was good. Um, other than that, the truck has not seen the shop, knock on wood. Um, I know eventually it's going to happen. I mean, every truck goes through it and there is no real avoiding it. You know, you can take care of it as much as possible, but eventually you're going to be down. So with that being said, on to the next thing. Um, I love how the truck runs, drives, feels great. Um, everything's pretty much almost the same. The steering wheel is different. Obviously the hood's different and the engine is completely different. Um, getting to the engine, um, one thing I don't like is where the coolant reservoir is. It's on the firewall and the fill spout, okay? Some of you that have these new 579 Ultra Loss would know what I'm talking about. The fill spout is lower than where the cold line fill is for the full. So it's like you can never get it to the full cold fill line, which kind of sucks. It, it irks me a little bit. So, but you know, as long as it can get above the low, I'm okay. Um, the engine itself sits lower. The fan's really low, um, which kind of, you know, if there's stuff on the roadway you want to be careful with. Um, the windshield washer fluid tank is on the passenger side now, down by the frame, which is really cool because it's really easy to fuel, uh, fill up, sorry, not fuel, fill up, and you know, you don't have to reach all high and everything if you're, you know, a shorter person, no offense. But um, other than that, uh, the hood mirrors are flimsy as fuck. I don't like them. I never liked hood mirrors. Um, I don't even use them. The last time I used a hood mirror was when I was driving a 379. Um, sorry, I got someone backing in next to me. All the spaces in the world and he chose to sit next to me. There's like a hundred spaces right here that's open. That's crazy. I hope you enjoy my reefer. Anyways. <laughs> um, with that being said, let's move on. Um, the hood mirrors are a little fingerly. Uh They shake while going down the road. You know, some people may not notice, but to me, I do notice. Um, the hood's smaller, more aerodynamic. I have a, seen a small increase in, you know, miles per gallon, which is kind of cool, uh, helpful. Um, let's see what else. Onto, you know, I, I feel like, it's the same length wheelbase as the older model of the 579, but I feel like what they did was they push everything forward and down. Made a smaller hood and put the cab closer. So uh, it seems like it's longer, but it's not. Um, next upgrade, cab lights. I love the cab lights. I mean, chicken lights, what do you expect? Um, pay, I can't remember what I paid for those. I think it was like, 1800 which seems kind of to most people seems kind of like a ripoff um it's more or less a cosmetic that i like about it i could have went somewhere else and got you know different types of lights that's all right that's my that's my deal i didn't want to have more downtime taking it to a shop when i can have it show up already on the truck um another thing is disc brakes all around Every, every one of my axles has disc brakes, which is awesome. I, I like them. Um, I feel like there's a slight difference in stopping power. Um, and so far during the winter time, I haven't had my brakes uh, frozen. So that's always a plus. I mean, as of yet, and, you know, dealing with, you know, this last cold snap was kind of crazy. Um, Next one, oh, the disc brakes. So the only thing I don't like about the disc brakes is it's real funky trying to check your brakes to make sure you have, you know, legal limit and everything. Um, so that's kind of kind of weird to me. Um, I know there's a way you can probably feel for it, but as far as I know from watching the Bendix uh, YouTube, is you literally have to take the tire off to see how much, you know, pad width is left. Unless some of you guys know how to do it, let me know. 
That'd be very much helpful. But part of the reason why I wanted it is, uh, from what I understand, is it's cheaper to maintain, to replace the brakes. It's cheaper, it's less shop time, less you know prices on you know material. Um, so that's always a plus, saving money, put more money back in the business. Uh, my next one is the seats. The level three seats, I am not impressed with. Um, I will not order them again. I feel like for the price that I paid for the seats, I feel like they should have been more comfortable. Um, I feel they put less padding than the stock seats, to compensate for the ventilation, which is understandable. Um, the heated seats are great, the ventilation is great. It just, it, it feels really rough when going down the road. Um, so, not enough cushion for them for me to buy them again. Uh, other than that, the truck's been great. Um, I love it. Um, I'd be really sad to see it go, but unfortunately, the day will come when it goes bye-bye and someone else will get to enjoy not only my upgrades but we'll be able to enjoy the truck and hopefully it, it lasts them a long time as well um so yeah uh everything else sleeper it's all the same i i did get the uh the fridge from the manufacturer um it's pretty cool because it matches the cabinet um but if you don't want that i mean the Prime store has it for cheaper than what you can get it from Peterbilt. Uh, I just chose to get it from Peterbilt because, you know, why not? Try new things, right? The one thing I did wanted to get that I ended up not getting is the shore power. Um, because I'm not buying this truck, I didn't. I felt like it wasn't a need to purchase the shore, shore power. Um, basically, shore power, all it does is helps keep your batteries when you're at home so you don't have to run your APU saves you more fuel which you know more money saved in the pocket um, that will definitely be on my next truck for sure uh, let's see what else um, the catwalk catwalk is a little different smaller but in the frame which you know I like it it's not too bad uh, for some it might be like man it's not big enough I can't walk the whole frame whatever I mean you don't really need the whole frame to walk unless you're a stretch frame which you ain't gonna find a prime driver with a stretch frame at all so it's not part of their you know requirements to run their authority uh, let's see what else oh digital dash mm, it's a love-hate relationship with the digital dash it's cool it's slick it's easy to clean that's what I like the most about it. it's easy to clean um, other than that I've had it freeze up on me a couple times um, I know a lot of the dashes are on recall um, so far my VIN hasn't popped up as a recall and it's only happened twice I mean pull over turn off the truck turn it back on and it goes back to normal uh, no big deal to me um, as long as it comes back um, the features on it is pretty cool um, now that we have speed we can we can sense what speed the truck is doing in front of us or a car is doing in front of us is very helpful on the dash um, yeah, look, it's it's pretty cool I like it but I don't like it I don't know it, it's like I said it's a love-hate relationship um, you'll either like it or you'll love it um, oh, the smart nav, still doing the same stuff it's doing. Come on, Peterbilt, let's get this together. Um, yeah, uh, I think that's about it. I did not get the Epic package, because I did not want those little silly, tiny little Freightliner mirrors, if you know what I mean. They look kind of small, and Peterbilt is one thing, but small. Um, yeah, steering wheel is different. Most of the controls are on, on the steering wheel, which is really cool, um, just like the, the last model. But one thing I do not like is the uh, alarm code. I've, I've gotten used to it, but the alarm code can get frustrating sometimes. Um, also, that little you know alarm code button also controls what your digital
visual dash would look like. It has different types of levels, which you actually only hit that with your hand or something like that, or your thumb, it just wipes out everything. So it, it can go all the way down to just showing the speed, or it can have everything like, you know, oil pressure, torque, and all that stuff. So it's, it's kind of annoying sometimes. Um, other than that, oh, they changed the interior color to a darker scheme. Which I absolutely love. I, I think they need to do more of that. Honestly, they should get rid of all the light gray. All the light gray should be gone out of this truck. It should go all dark color. Um, but 